when light passes through an opening or aperture then it bends around the edge or curve of the opening and this is called a diffraction now if the size of the aperture is comparable to the wavelength of light and diffraction is more pronounced here suppose let me take a small slit here this is the source and the light is coming like this in this region and if you keep a screen here so this is the region at which you can find the brightness now if the size of this opening is almost comparable to the wavelength of the light here then you can see this bending very easily so to observe this bending to observe the bending of light this size of the aperture or the hole or this opening should be comparable to the wavelength of the light that is passing through this one so let us say size of this one let us say d here this is nearly equal to the wavelength of light that is passing through this one then diffraction can be observed very easily for example if you take rooms with some windows or doors the size of all these windows or doors are in meters and wavelength of the sound wave is also in meters that's why sound can bend very easily on the edges of these windows and doors but the light as the wavelength is in average wavelength of yellow light is 5600 angstroms or 5.6 into 10 power -7 meters or this can also be written as 56 into or 0.56 into 10 power minus 6 meter so this is 0.5 6 micrometer so if the visible light whose average wavelength is this much passes through the slits whose size is only in micrometers then we can observe the bending of light very easily so here this will light will travel like this directly if the size of this one is nearly equal to the wavelength then this light will bend into this region this bending into the geometrical shadow or if it is a disk here let us say this is a disk here one opaque disk here this is opaque disk then what happens you will get a shadow of this one on the screen here so this is the shadow of the disk but according to this diffraction what happens this light which is traveling on the edge of this one will bend into the geometrical shadow this is called a encroachment of light into geometrical shadow because the shadow is uh, similar to the geometrical shape of this disk here so the encroachment of light in the geometrical shadow due to the bending on the edges due to the bending on the edges edges of object is also called diffraction this is called diffraction now this diffraction was discovered by a scientist called grimaldi grimaldi now this was explained by two different scientists known as fresnel and fraunhofer so diffraction or diffraction can be divided into two types here one is fresnel diffraction second one fraunhofer diffraction so what is this fresnel diffraction what is this fraunhofer diffraction in fresnel diffraction we have source and slits in fresnel diffraction this is the slit here opening through which the light is passing here so here the source is somewhere at large distance and uh, in fresnel diffraction source is at some distance let us say this is the source from which the light is traveling and this is the screen here we can see that from the slit both the source and the screen are nearer to the slit in fresnel diffraction but whereas in fraunhofer diffraction to this slit let us say this is the slit 
source is at an infinite distance and uh, screen is also at infinite distance here infinite means the wavelength of the light is very small here this is in uh, angstroms only wavelength of the light is in angstroms that is 10 power minus 10 meters but if you take the size of this slit uh, when compared to this uh, when compared to the wavelength of the light the slit width is very large and this distance is also very large so don't think that infinite means uh, maybe 100 or 2000 kilometers when compared to the wavelength if the distance of source and slit are very large then we call it as a Fraunhofer diffraction now in Fraunhofer diffraction the light source will pass through this one like this and here we know the wave front so this is the wave front here this is a circular wave front so circular wave front will incident on the slit here so this is the circular or spherical wave front here so in Fresnel diffraction Fresnel used a spherical wave front to explain the diffraction effect but in Fraunhofer diffraction the waves are the light waves are starting from a large distance from a source and now they are traveling like this and this is the light uh, which is passing through this one so these wave fronts are plane wave fronts here so we have to assume that a plane wave front incident on the slit here this is the plane wave front so after this here this light when it is passing through this one we are using the lenses here to focus on this one to the screen and even if they are bending like this so this will be focused onto the screen here central bright fringe and uh, some points here so in Fresnel diffraction source and screen are nearer to the slit first point or main point source and screen are at finite distance from aperture or the slit from the slit but what about this Fraunhofer diffraction in Fraunhofer diffraction source and the screen are at infinite distance from the slit this is the first point that you have to remember now the second point is Fresnel used a spherical wave front to explain this one Fraunhofer used a plane wave front to explain this one third one here lenses are not required lenses are not required to observe this pattern but here lenses are required to observe this pattern so lenses are required to observe this uh, diffraction pattern fourth one the uh, mathematical treatment given by Fresnel to explain this uh, diffraction is critical or complex mathematical treatment is complex but here mathematical treatment is simple that's why we are going to learn this uh, Fraunhofer diffraction in uh, our PU syllabus Fraunhofer diffraction in this uh, there is a slit of width D in which light is passing here so generally this is the first wave and this is the last wave so at the center of the screen at the center of the screen as the path difference between these two is zero between the first and last wave is zero so always uh, here when the opening is given we will get a bright region at the center but if you take a point P here at point P at point P here what happens the first wave is striking point P here last wave is striking the point P here so what is the path difference between these two this is the path difference so which I am going to write as delta X here so we know that sine theta is equal to delta X by D delta x is equal to d sin theta so this is the path difference between these two now if you divide this slit into two parts then divide uh, the slit into two parts 
then for every wave that is emanating from the first part there will be a wave which is a having a path difference of a lambda by 2 so the total path difference between these two is equal to 1 lambda that is delta x is equal to if it is 1 lambda then in this case for every wave that is in the first half of this part will have a wave which is having a path difference of lambda by 2 so these two undergo destructive interference and a dark fringe will be formed so in this point when path difference is equal to 1 lambda you will get a dark region at point p similarly if this is a delta x is equal to 2 lambda if the path difference between these two is 2 lambda then also you will get a dark region so finally we can write if the path difference between the first and last wave that, that are traveling through the slit uh, reaching that point p have a wavelength of the path difference of lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda and so on and lambda you will get a dark region here or dark fringe will be formed at this point so from this we can write delta x is equal to n lambda is the condition for dark region in diffraction whereas the same case is a bright region for interference now if it is the central maximum here central bright fringe here let us say this is the dark one and this is the dark one so between this and this one so we will have some regions where you will get uh, the secondary maxima this is called central maximum the bright region which is formed at the center of the screen is called uh, central maximum now we can write if delta x is equal to between lambda and 2 lambda so we can write this is 3 lambda by 2 5 lambda by 2 7 lambda by 2 and so on including this lambda by 2 so if delta x is equal to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2 where n is equal to 1 2 3 and so on you will get this one so this is the condition for secondary maximum secondary maxima suppose if you write this fringe is the central fringe which we can take it as zero then you can use this n is equal to one so one minus one lambda by two so three lambda by two five lambda and so on suppose if you take this as one then you have to write this equation as two n plus one so for central fringe you take n is equal to zero you can use this formula suppose if you take n is equal to one then you have to write two n plus one into lambda by two so this is the condition but in most of the books they are taking the central maxima n is equal to one so i am going to take this as a 2n plus 1 into 2 where it starts from 0 1 2 3 and so on sorry 1 2 3 4 and so on if it is the small slit this is the screen and this is the let us say central bright fringe so this distance let me take it as y and this distance between slit and screen is capital D here and a small d is the width of the slit here now let us say this you take it as theta so we can write tan theta is equal to y by d so y is equal to d tan theta so this is equal to d tan theta this is also d tan theta so what is the width of the central maximum this is called width of central maximum the width of central maximum in Fraunhofer diffraction is given by beta is equal to d tan theta because this is actually y plus y 2y 2d tan theta this is 2d into so what is tan theta from the triangle this is nothing but y by d so this is also equal to as it is the angular fringe width that is a beta by d which is given by capital d lambda by small d by d this is nothing but d lambda or you can write this as we know that in Fraunhofer diffraction d sin theta is equal because this is first minimum this is also first minimum so from this we can write what is the condition for this one d sin theta is 1 lambda 
sin theta is lambda by d and we know that if theta is very small tan theta can be written as sin theta which is equal to lambda by d so width of the central fringe is given by 2 capital d lambda by small d intensity at a point on the screen we know that the phase difference between the first wave and the last wave reaching the screen is delta phi which is equal to 2 pi by lambda into delta x if the phase difference between the first and last wave is phi so i am writing this change in phase is equal to phi which is going to be 2 pi by lambda into delta x is nothing but d sin theta so this is the equation but here for every wave that is emanating from the first half there will be a wave whose phase change by exactly half of the phase difference between these two if these two difference by phase change phi these two will have a phase difference of phi by 2 that i am going to do it with the alpha so alpha is equal to phi by 2 the phase difference between the waves that are emanating from these two for this we will have a their wave for this wave there will be a similar wave here whose phase difference is half of the total phase difference so alpha is given by half of the total phase difference half into 2 pi by lambda into d sin theta 2 to get cancelled alpha is equal to pi by lambda d sin theta so this is alpha now it is found that the intensity on a screen at any point is given by the maximum intensity which is equal to the intensity of the central maximum that is formed here into sin alpha by alpha whole square so this is the equation that can be used to find out the intensity on the screen at any point but what is this alpha alpha is nothing but pi by lambda d sin theta so substitute this value and you will get suppose if that point o is taken sin alpha by alpha will become 1 1 square is 1 so intensity is i naught so based on this one if you draw the graph between intensity and the different positions here for central maximum intensity is more so this is central maximum and this is a first minimum and then this is a first secondary maximum this is a second minimum now this is the second secondary maximum and like this uh, intensity decreases rapidly for the maxima also here but the minima will not have zero intensity and the, it will have some brightness here and then it vanishes and on the other side also you can see the same pattern and then it uh, vanishes uh, as it is that means number of fringes produced in the diffraction factor are less you will have only three four on the other side of this uh, central maximum whereas in interference the number of fringes are too high and the intensity of this one is also maximum and all bright fringes will have same intensity here whereas only the central bright fringe in the diffraction pattern will have maximum intensity after that intensity decreases rapidly suppose if the intensity of the central maximum is i it is found that intensity of the first maximum is only 4.7 percent or 4.7 percent of the i only let us say this is 100 this is only 4.7 that means if it in the graph also if you represent this with 100 centimeters you have to represent this with 4.7 centimeters only so actually speaking this graph will be similar to this one only if it is 100 this is only less than 5 so after that it disappears here In a single slit diffraction, width of the slit is 1 micrometer, wavelength is 5 to angstroms, and the distance between the slit and the screen is 2 meter. They are asking us to find out the angular position of the first minima, angular width of central maxima, width of central maxima. First of all, what is this angular position? We know that for minima condition is A, D sin theta is equal to N lambda. As it is first minima, you keep n is equal to 1. d sin theta is equal to 1 lambda. So sin theta will be lambda by d, which is equal to lambda is 5000 angstroms. 
so 5 into 10 power minus 7 meters by width of the slit is 1 micrometer 10 power minus 6 so this will be 0 0.5 so sine theta is equal to 0 0.5 that is half so theta must be equal to 30 degrees so the this one angular position of first minima is 30 degrees so half of this value is 30 so what is the angular width of central maxima let us say this is the first minima this is also first minima and this angle already we got it as 30 degrees here total angle will be the angular width of the central maxima will be 2 theta that is 2 into 13 this is 60 degrees now width of the central maximum central maximum width formula 2 capital D lambda by small d so what are the known values here all are known values because 2 is given 2 is you can take it as 2 d is given as 2 lambda 5 into 10 power minus 7 by this is 10 power minus 6 2 twos are 4 4 fives are 20 into 10 power minus 1 or 20 by 10 this is 2 meters so this is the value of the central width diffraction from circular aperture till now we studied about diffraction through a small slit let us say this is a circular aperture then let us say this is a circular aperture and if light is passing through this one this is the screen and this is the central maximum so central maximum intensity is always minimum and this is first minima and then it decreases on both sides now here if you take this as theta and width of this circular aperture is d so we can write d sin theta is the path difference generally we write this as one lambda for minima for first minima we write one lambda that is only in case of a slit but in case of a circular aperture here this is given as 1.22 lambda if theta is very small you can write d into theta is equal to 1.22 lambda theta is equal to 1.22 lambda by d so this is the limit of resolution According to a scientist called Rayleigh, you can observe two objects as two separate objects. You can distinguish two bright objects as two separate objects. Only if the distance between the two central maxima of those two objects is equal or greater than the distance between one of the central maxima and the first minima. For example, let me take, we are watching two headlamps of a car from a large distance. Now, this will produce its own central maxima here this is its own central maxima of this one then for this one also it will produce its own central maxima now what is the distance between the two central maxima the distance between the two central maxima equal to distance between the maxima and its first minima that means if these two are separated like this we can observe them as two distinguished light sources or if these two are coins are like this here the distance between these two d is equal to distance between the central maxima and its first minima so this is the central maxima and first minima so then also we can observe these as two separate objects but uh, you see this one this is the central maxima of the first one this is the central maxima of the second one here distance between the two central maxima is less than distance between central maxima and the minima so then you cannot observe these are two separate objects these two headlamps appears to as a single source here so this is called Rayleigh's criteria according to Rayleigh's criteria to observe or to distinguish two sources two bodies as separately then this distance between the two central maxima must be equal or greater than the distance between the central maxima and its first minima on this concept a small problem diameter of eye lens our eye has a lens whose diameter is 5 millimeter and wavelength of the light used to here is 5 angstroms find the resulting limit of eye if you know 
the limit of resolution theta is equal to 1.22 lambda by d so here you can write the limit of resolution or resolving limit limit of resolution as theta is equal to 1.22 lambda by d so this theta is equal to 1.22 lambda is equal to 5 into 10 power minus 7 d is equal to 5 into 10 power minus 3 5 5 get cancelled theta is equal to 1.22 10 power minus 4 radians sometimes they may ask you to find out the resolving power of i the resolving power of this one is 1 by limit of resolution so which is given by d by 1.22 lambda so what is the resolving power of i in this uh, for this data the resolving power equal to 1 by 1.22 into 10 power 4 so this is the resolving power in this case two objects are located at distance of 1 kilometer from an observer find the minimum distance between the two objects if I is just able to resolve them. So let me take these are the two objects here. The distance of separation between these two is unknown. Let me take it as x. And uh, from one kilometer distance, one observer is observing these two. So from this triangle, from this triangle, we can say that this is the angle of resolution here. So we can say that let us say this is the distance between the observer and the two objects. So from the trigonometry, we can write tan theta is equal nearly theta which is equal to x by l but uh, theta if it is very small this can also be written as limit of resolution is 1.22 lambda by d so this is also equal to 1.22 lambda by d so what is the minimum distance between these two so that they can resolve easily so i want this x value so x is equal to 1.22 lambda by d into distance between the two objects and the observer so this is going by 1.22 lambda is equal to 5000 that is 5 into 10 power minus 7 by this diameter of this uh, lens is 5 into 10 power minus 3 into this is a thousand because length uh, distance between this is thousand meters this is kilometer which is equal to thousand meters or directly i am writing this as 10 power 3 now you can cancel this 5 and 5 here this is 10 power minus 3 when cos of 10 power plus 3 so 10 power minus 1 1.22 into 10 power minus 1 or 0 0.122 meter so this is the distance between the two objects so if the distance between these two objects is 0 0.122 meter or this you could get it, give it as 12.2 centimeters based on the options given or it can be 122 millimeter also so then only these can be resolved as two different objects if the distance is less than this then i cannot resolve these two as two separate objects